Whichever way you cut it, Starfield is going to be the next big thing in space games. At least, that is, if things go to plan. After all, it does feel lately that purchasing a AAA game is somewhat like playing the lottery. There's not that many winners out there, and you just never really know quite what you're going to get. But that said, I am going to give Starfield the benefit of the doubt, because I do genuinely believe it's going to be the next big thing, and will very likely redefine the entire genre. Keep in mind, however, that I do have a few caveats here. Firstly, keep your expectations in check. There's a lot of people really on the out-of-controller hype train, and, well, we don't know where that's going to head. But also, do check out my recent video on this subject. I'll link that in the video description, and hopefully, I'll remember to put it on the screen here as well. So then, on to the reasons why I feel that Starfield could be replacing whatever space game many people are currently playing. The first of these is uh, planets. Now, Starfield has 1,000 planets. That's by no means the uh, most planets in a space game. After all, we have uh, Elite Dangerous with its hundreds of billions of star systems, uh, probably trillions of planets, and No Man's Sky with literally, uh, well, quintillions of planets, many, many different worlds out there. The difference with uh, Starfield is that it's going all in on keeping things very focused and very refined. That doesn't mean that certain planets won't be repeatable. It doesn't mean that certain planets won't be barren. In fact, it's almost guaranteed that, yes, some planets will be barren and there will be a much repeating out there, repetition. But the thing is, this is a Bethesda title, which means that, likely in the same vein as the Elder Scrolls series and the Fallout series, many of the areas will be immense in detail. Whether that's discovery in caves, villages, small towns, or even some of the big, well-established cities. There's going to be a plenty to find and a plenty to do. What's more, the activities on these worlds is unstri extremely unlikely to revolve around a pure grind. So in No Man's Sky, for example, and Elite Dangerous, many of the activities down on planets revolves around repeating the same activities over and over, often just collecting certain resources, other times doing perhaps certain missions that are very basic in nature. Due to the way that Bethesda titles work, usually this means that they have quite in-depth mechanics going on, so there should very likely be more going on than simple collection of resources on these variety of worlds. In fact, this leads us into the second point, which is the game is, and this one's big for me, the game is going to be a single-player game. Now, I know a lot of people out there do love multiplayer. In fact, multiplayer are probably some of the most popular, if not the most popular games currently on the market. But single player games should not be discounted. After all, let's take a look at the recent Zelda game. Tears of the Kingdom sold 10 million copies in a very short period of time. God of War has been a very popular Ragnarok, as, had, as has Horizons and other similar titles. So single player games are far from out for the count. And I do believe that, well, a lot of people still do enjoy them. In fact, on a poll on my channel I conducted last year, more than half of, or around about half of my audience, actually prefer single-player games over multiplayer games. So for me, this really is a big deal when it comes to Starfield. The current biggest space games in the market, No Man's Sky, Star Citizen, Elite Dangerous, all have a multiplayer focus, although No Man's Sky is kind of single-player as well. But there's not really any game out there that really deep dives into what it means to be a true single-player story-driven and quest-driven world. Starfield is going to deliver that, and that means it puts you as the player at the centre of everything that that's going on. That's something that really is going to be interesting to me, and I do think it's going to have a massive impact on what we can expect in future from space games. Being single player, however, doesn't necessarily mean a lack of variety. In fact, the opposite can very easily and likely is going to be true. The third option on this list then is the spaceships. Now, spaceships in any game or any space game are immensely important. Uh, some really have great, great ship designs. Love it or hate it, Star Citizen does have fantastic and very well realized spaceships. Elite Dangerous has iconic spaceships, and although they don't have any interiors, these are wonderful designs as well, with many very well-loved ships. Starfield, on the other hand, is going for something a little bit different. Players here are going to be able to fully customise their ship. This includes building ships, 
there will be a variety of components that players can piece together and effectively design their own ships. In the very short clips we saw at last year's uh, showcase, we saw quite a few different designs, most of them dramatically different from each other, some large, some small. What's more, players will be able to walk around the interior of these ships as well as crew them with NPCs. Spaceships then are going to be a home away from home and allow players to transport themselves around planets as well as from one point in the star system to another point in another star system. Whilst of course there's not any seamless planetary landings, personally I don't think this is necessary for a game like Starfield and I feel the game is going to do very well without that. Now this one is kind of related to what I touched on in the single player aspect. That is a full open world. Now you may say that a game like uh, Elite Dangerous or Star Citizen or even No Man's Sky also have full open worlds, but I'd argue a very big counterpoint here. Whilst they are open world in nature, but none of them, in my view at least, feel truly alive. This is in stark contrast to the Elder Scrolls series and the Fallout series where NPCs go about their day-to-day -day quests, moving from one city to the next, doing a whole bunch of various activities, and you can then join in with that or interfere with it in various ways. And that just made the game feel very much alive. In fact, in an interview between Todd Howard and Lex Fridman, Todd stated that given the options between high fidelity graphics and great performance, he'd rather opt for a great simulated living and breathing world. And that seems to be what they're going for with Starfield. And finally, this one is pretty big, quests and stories. This is something that we don't have in any of the big three space games, or four if you count EVE Online, or even, well, you can go as far as X4 Foundations here where they do have a campaign and some quests and stories, but none of them have come close to what you can expect to find in a true Bethesda title. That's something I'm very interested in seeing in Starfield. In fact, when you combine the other four elements we've discussed in this video, that's planets, ships, single player and a full open world, and combine that with the quest and story, then it's very likely you're going to have something pretty decent, something perhaps dynamic that speaks of the possibility of some level of emergent gameplay. So there we have it, those are my five reasons why I think Starfield is going to shake things up and that it's very likely that it will get people kind of moving away from whatever space game they are playing right now. Not everyone of course, but a lot of people. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Do you feel like Starfield has the potential to be a genre defining and really shake things up for space games or do you think it may fall flat on its face and really lead to nothing? Or perhaps you feel there's room for some middle ground here and Starfield may well fit. Yeah, let me know in the comments section below. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys and girls next time.